things which must shortly come to pass. Learn about them and be prepared. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shrew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. The definite time in which the day of the Lord occurs is always spatially near, about to burst through the door into our matrix upon God's command. Therefore, not knowing the day or hour of its coming, we should repent now before it's unleashed upon us. But John was not told all events in his book must shortly come to pass. Judgment Day and the descent of New Jerusalem don't happen until a thousand years of Christ's millennial kingdom. The literal translations of the phrase is preferable, which things necessarily have occurred rapidly. The seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls all must occur quickly to fit in the end time seven year week. Moses and Elijah preach for 42 months until the beast slays them. The beast rules for another 42 months. That totals seven years. That these events occur quickly is confirmed by Christ, who likened his sudden and quick coming to it. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to shrew unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Christ's coming is similarly rapid, bursting into our matrix speedily, without warning. Therefore, keep watch. Blessed is he that keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. History's greatest Greek scholars agree quickness is the operative sense, not nearness. It refers to God's speedy time. Our Lord reveals the rapidity of end time events once they begin, lest we be caught unprepared. To be saved, the first step you should take, if you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, is to be born again by the Holy Spirit of God. Because Jesus did promise, if you confess him before men, he will confess you in heaven before his Father and angels. I did that. I was born again after I confessed the Lord Jesus Christ publicly. God doesn't lie. He promised all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. There's no exceptions to that. So if you're a little afraid of confessing Christ before strangers, you can go to any nearby Bible-believing church, talk to the pastor. There likely will be an altar call or he will arrange one where you could go in front of the congregation and tell everyone that you want Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. To learn more about these things or anything we've discussed in this video, go to my site, www.endtimenews.net. It's free, so check it out.